global things in it. Hey Sneeko, does this outfit look familiar? This is the same thing I wore last time I took you over my knee and spanked your bottom with some discipline. And I'm happy to report that these are back in stock and a lot more at moistglobal.com. Last time I talked about you, I used you for a merchandise push as well, so might as well stick with tradition. I bet just seeing me in this attire again has just sent you on a full-blown Winter Soldier episode with your eyes rolling into the back of your skull as you're experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder, because the first video I made on you offended you to such a high degree that you have not stopped whining since. It's already been three months, can you believe that? How time flies. You started shit with me by insulting me and my girlfriend out of nowhere, so naturally I responded by making fun of you in return and showcasing the reasons why I don't respect you. But unfortunately I failed to calculate just how much of a sensitive fucking loser you are because this hurt your feelings <laughs> bro, to such a high you degree. you know the reason why I like this guy, bro? Bro, Moist Critical is like, he says the most like hurtful shit, but he says it in the most like non-like, enthusiastic way possible you'd be like you're such a fucking loser like <laughs> you're like bro you're such a fucking loser bro i can't believe i fucking spanked you bro oh my god he, the way he insults people is just so funny bro i just there's just something about it bro. i don't understand come like an armageddon in your brain Three months you have continued to melt down about this. The day after I posted my response, he went on stream and had a huge unhinged tantrum and meltdown about the whole thing, and then he sent some of his viewers over. So I was joking with them, saying like, oh, you guys must have just stopped the cuties watch party over there at Sneeko's stream, right? Welcome, cucks, that kind of shit. And it got really under his skin in a big way, so he started dancing around with a gun what and the threatening fuck? to come shoot me. So he kept saying, oh, you're in Tampa, right? I'll come see you, waving his gun around and dancing. You wanna watch my clips? Watch my clips. Watch my clips. You wanna, wa oh, you want me to watch your clips? Watch my clips. <laughs> These are the only clips I'm watching, you were? Now the reason he keeps saying watch my clips while threatening oh, me here is because during the stream, I couldn't watch him live because he just kept shouting slurs. So I said, watch my clips to see what I was saying about you. I had it's to communicate clip, via Twitch though, clips. Okay. And I'm sorry to be that guy. This is like the grammar police of guns. It's not even a call but he's a, a fucking imbecile. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're <laughs> mags, not clips. You absolute fucking dummy. The oh. same way that oh, this shit. is also... This nigga... Bro, this nigga is locked and loaded for war. Nigga, where the fuck you get that shit from? Yo! <laughs> what the fuck? This nigga is ready for World War Three. That nigga Sneeko was waving his gun around and shit. This nigga Charlie brought out the damn fucking... I don't even know what... What is this gun like? This can't... This an assault rifle? It's an automatic? Dude, this nigga got the damn arsenal, man. What the fuck? said watch my clips to see what I was saying about you. I had to communicate via Twitch clips. And I'm sorry to be that guy, this is like the grammar police of guns, but he's a fucking imbecile, you absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags, not clips, you absolute fucking dummy. The same way that this is also a Bro, mag. That nigga got a flashlight on that bitch. He got a flashlight, a damn laser. Oh, hell no, this nigga, yeah, this nigga ready for war. They're all mags. Stop saying clips, you look fucking stupid here. Anyway, sorry for the gun anatomy lesson. He was very upset, so he was threatening to come shoot me, beat me up, all of that, because I hurt his feelings, and it's been festering for quite some time now. Three fucking months. You love to bitch about how everyone's canceling you. These soy oh, boy name. NPC bots are all canceling you. It's all you do. You treat the teenagers in your Discord like they're your goddamn therapist. Just going in there to complain about the invisible boogeyman canceling you again, shaking your fist at the clouds. I also love that you treat this Discord server like it's your PR team, so you have them work on your responses on Twitter because you're not witty enough to come up with anything on your own. You have no ability to banter. You can't insult anyone. Anytime you're pushed, all you fall back on is one of three things. Soy boy, bot, or NPC, and that's it. You never deviate from this path, which is ironic because you're like literally a sheep. You have three programmed responses. You're like the absolute worst character, side character in an MMO. It's pathetic, but I'm getting sidetracked. 
You love to be super public about how much you hate antidepressants and you shit on anyone who takes antidepressants, but with the way you talk in your Discord server, I'm pretty convinced that you're only two or three messages away from asking your community to source antidepressants for you under the table to help with all of this mental anguish you're going through. And I think that honestly be a good idea. It might help you. But I'm, 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 I'm putting the cart before the horse here. How did we get to this point? Well, I made that video about Sneeko and I fully planned on that being the only time I ever talked about this asshole. I really did. All I wanted to do was highlight why I personally don't respect him. I know a lot of people criticize me for not tackling his points. And to that I say, bah humbug, this fucking goober didn't make any points. All he did was insult me and my girl. Bah humbug, bro. This nigga is, bro. Oh my goodness. Here. How did we get to this point? Well, I made that video about Sneeko and I fully planned on that being the only time I ever talked about this asshole. I really did. All I wanted to do was highlight why I personally don't respect him. I know a lot of people criticize me for not tackling his points. And to that I say, bah humbug, this fucking goober didn't make any points. All he did was insult me and my girlfriend. He insulted me and my girlfriend because I made fun of one of his friend's blatantly fake stories. He resorted to childish name calling like, I'm ugly and I don't go outside. That's not making any points. Like, what am I supposed to debunk, debunk there? No, actually, my mom thinks I'm handsome, and, and so does my girlfriend, so you're wrong. Factually wrong. There's nothing to debunk. The whole point of the video was highlighting why I don't respect him. I'll go ahead and briefly give you a previously on Dragon Ball Z lore recap to bring you up to speed on the points I was making for why I think he is a pathetic piece of shit, and his opinion holds no value in my eyes. Is because he publicly defends Cuties as one of his favorite movies. Cuties was a Netflix film that used real child actresses in sexual situations. So they sexualized... Whoa, huh? Cuties. What the fuck is that? Cuties. What the fuck is this? Um, this movie is, yeah, I don't know, bro. This shit is very questionable. Um, <laughs> yo, he said, okay, so wait, he said Sneeko supports this movie. What did he say? Is because he publicly defends Cuties as one of his favorite movies. Cuties was a Netflix film that used real child actresses in sexual situations. So they sexualized real children. What the fuck? A fact that Sneeko himself acknowledges but writes off as being okay because it's realistic because in the real world children get sexualized. I'll say it again, regardless of what the intention of the film was, they missed the mark because what ended up happening is they sexualized the child actresses. That is a problem, full stop. Even if the message was supposed to be the opposite. I mean, it's like, I mean, that makes sense though. It's like, I understand you're trying to convey the message of what happens in real life, but it's like, if you're actually doing it in the film, it kind of contradicts the message that you're trying to do. I mean, nah, that makes complete sense though. What the fuck? Com exactly, what the fuck, bro? They still ended up contributing to the very problem they were speaking out against. I saw Cuties last night and it was, it was pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. I went in ready to hate like everybody else. I, I saw the cover and it was- When I look at Sneeko, bro, this is what I imagine Ray looks like. Like, Ray, I think this is what you look like, bro. Now, I know what Ray looks like, but still, like, this is what I used to think Ray looks like right here. Sneeko. I got clickbaited. So did you. You got clickbaited. The thing about Cuties is it's not an unrealistic film. Like, yes, it shows children in a you sexual Mongolian way. You Mongolian bastard. Not unusual now. And the people who are really mad about this aren't Gen Z. Imagine claiming children in sexual positions is clickbait. Yikes. That's rough. You admit that the children were sexualized. That is bad. Okay? That means the movie failed in its mission. I don't know what you don't get about that. But regardless, I'm not here to just keep hammering home the same points. Uh, another thing that I talked about for a reason I don't respect him is because he battles with his own sexuality. He is very public about how he used to go to these swinger parties. I think he says four in total over the course of like two weeks where he watched his girlfriend get fucked by other men. Even telling the story of how he was literally in the bed watching his girl get fucked by a different man. Nigga, what? Nigga, that's not your girlfriend? Yo, what, bro? <laughs> Nigga, are you like doped up? 
What the fuck you mean you was watching other niggas hit your girl, bro? Are you on fucking bath salts, bro? Like, nigga, what? <laughs> yo, yo, what? Bro, this guy must be out of his mind. Bro, what? He used to go. Nigga, that's not your girl. That's their girl now. To these swinger parties, I think he says four in total over the course of like two weeks, where he watched his girlfriend get fucked by other men. Even telling the story of how he was literally in the bed watching his girl get fucked by a different man. Moaning intensely, and it, it was traumatizing. Yet he recommends that everyone should try it at some point for some Yo, what reason. Up, because this was... What's imagine, up, what's see, up? imagine seeing the girl you love, like, get fucked. Get fucked. You love her? Yeah, I do. I love her. Yeah, I love her. I was about to say I love this bitch. I'm like, no, nah, let me not say that. I love my, my queen. wifey. My queen. And Good you answer. allowed the love of your the life to get, to get fucked up. by another man. What happened to the other three? Why, why is that one in last? I'm crazy. The first <laughs> time, as soon as I saw, like, three pumps in, I just got up and walked out. I'm just like, I can't. Like oh, feeling oh, traumatic oh, oh, thoughts. three pumps in. Like the, the first one, oh, wait, hold on. I got to make sure she's really getting fucked. Oh, second, oh, man, I don't know. Third one, oh, no, I'm out. <laughs> it's like three pumps in. Nigga, I would have, nigga, the second she even would have got undressed and got into position, I would have just been like, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for your time, bro. Like this nigga said three pumps in and I walked out, bro. You should have been left. Bro, it's like he wasn't sure if he wanted to stay or not. It's like seeing her with another person. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. To, I th but I think it's something everybody should do just to test. No! I, no. You know what? So my point with this was. But wait, wait, wait. What? He said that's like something everyone should do just to test. Nigga, so hell no, nah, man. This nigga Sneeko is something else, bro. That girl must have been. Nah, man. Nah, man. Listen, bro, if your girl, if if your girl is getting fucked by those many dudes at a party, bro, just that's not your girl, bro. Sound like <laughs> bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh uh, yeah, that girl was happy. Why is this the guy that's lecturing everyone on their relationships, shitting on people's relationships, when he himself is in one that makes him very upset and he can't come to terms with it? Now, if he's open about being a cuck and happy and proud to be a cuck, that's fine. But he's not. It makes him mad every single time. So, why the fuck is this insecure guy the one that's the moral authority on healthy relationships all of a sudden? That was the point of me bringing up that clip. Now, that's that was basically the whole video. I summed it up real quick. All I pointed out is I don't respect his opinion because he defends a movie I consider to be child porn. I think any film or any production that has real children being sexualized should be classified as child porn. That's how I view it. Maybe your definition is different, but that's how I personally view that kind of content. So him defending that was beyond reprehensible to me. And him being very public with his cuckoldry and how uh, scarring it has been, it should be a lesson, an example that he himself is not great when it comes to relationships and all these things. And I posted that and it made him extremely upset and he hasn't stopped fucking crying about it for three months. So, fast forward to two days ago. I was streaming a Moist Esports tournament and I went up to go to the bathroom. I had to take a shit. It was a double flusher. So I was on the toilet for quite some time and I saw a Sneeko post that he's posted quite a few times now and I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not doing anything else right now on the porcelain throne. I'll play in the pig pen. So I did. For three months now, Sneeko has had this adorable little collage that he made that looks like it's straight out of a 16-year-old girl's diary with pictures of boys from her class that she doesn't like. All about people that have hurt his feelings. This is his wall of shame for people that have insulted him online. What's even sadder about it is he purposely leaves out people that he's afraid of. So, Turkey Tom, for example, made a whole video talking about Sneeko and how pathetic he is, and... Sneeko tried to talk a big game to him, even challenged him to a debate, which Turkey Tom accepted with jubilation. He was ecstatic. And then Sneeko kept ducking him, ghosting him. So he leaves Turkey Tom off of this list because he's afraid to actually talk to him. And he also leaves off quite a few other people, but the most notable other one that is comical for the absence is Brandon Buckingham. Brandon Buckingham is an internet content creator that Sneeko lied about for a long time, and they had a lot of beef. And Brandon Buckingham actually challenged him to a fight. 
and Sneeko is very fearful of him. We'll get into that in we'll get into that more in depth in a moment, but I just need to set the stage a little bit here with this collage. So after seeing this for the hundredth time in the last three months, I finally just said, Holy shit, you pathetic, sensitive, soy little worm. I made fun of you for watching your girlfriend get fucked by numerous other men and also insulted you for defending child porn. That's not cancellation. That's just spitting on you for being a pitiful sad cuck. And this puppy really blew up on Twitter in a big way. Now, I will say it again. What I did, and what I am doing right now, is not canceling you, Sneeko. I am insulting you. I am making fun of you. Something that you were supposed to be a huge proponent of, right? Wasn't like one of your big things like bullying needs to be brought back. So now that I'm making fun of you, what, all of a sudden now it's, now it's off limits? Now it's canceling? You have become the SJWs that you criticize so much. I don't know how you don't realize that. We continue. He says, You know in your soul you would never say that to my face. To which I respond, You literally have a collage of people that hurt your feelings on the internet. You haven't stopped whining about me for months now, you goofy NPC. Even if you beat my ass in a fight, it doesn't change the truth. You're still a cuck who also defends child porn. I think this is important to talk about, and I just <clears throat> talked about it That's recently. Crazy. When you are getting your feelings hurt and your immediate response isn't to fire back with insults, jokes, whatever, it's to challenge someone to a fight, you've taken a huge L. You've shown that the person has got under your skin, and the only thing you can resort to is a caveman brain of, I'll beat you in a fight. Sneeko, you beating me in a fight doesn't unfuck your girlfriend from the numerous men that had sex with her in front of you. It doesn't do anything. Everything I've said still stands. Nothing changes. It doesn't even salvage your ego. All it is is a pathetic fucking attempt at attention. And I don't think you believe half the things you talk about. I really think Sneeko just panders as much as possible. He himself doesn't even stand by the things he talks about. I really don't think he has any beliefs of his own. He just echoes what he thinks is going to get him the biggest audience slash the most money. That's what I think. So this puffing out his chest of challenging me to a fight is clearly attention. That's what it feels like. Because you don't have the same energy for Brandon Buckingham. Brandon Buckingham is more than willing to fight you any day of the week. But with him, you don't want to do that for some reason. Why? Do you not stand by your beliefs when it comes to Brandon Buckingham? He has said all the same things about you that I am saying about you. So why is he exempt? Hmm? Why don't you want to fight him? That's so weird. This is what you said about Brandon Buckingham and fighting him. And then finally, when Brandon Buckingham is down to meet Sneeko, he's there to box him. They're both similar sizes. Sneeko would now rather just sit at home and tell jokes behind his computer. I'd rather, just, I'd rather sit at home and yell at a camera, tell jokes than, you know, risk my manhood falling flat for Brandon, Brandon Buckingham, you know, if I lose the fight. So now it's suddenly cool to just stay at home and keep it all online. The full video here from Willie Mac is an absolute masterpiece on laying out every pathetic thing that Sneeko has ever done, said, or everything ever. So I highly recommend checking it out. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's a banger. So as you can see, the people he's confident in fighting are ones that he feels confident he'd win against. I'm five foot six. I think he's six foot one. So the height advantage he feels very confident with. And he has every reason to. He would probably beat me in a fight. But like I said, that doesn't change anything. Everything I've said is still true. I mean, it, you doesn't, are a cuck, it doesn't matter. Self-admitted. And you have defended cuties publicly. Which, by more than just me, by many, is considered child porn. You're pathetic. Beating me in a fight doesn't change any of those facts. I've also been... Yeah, I actually didn't know, uh... Moist was like, I didn't know he was 5'6". I always thought he was taller than that. He don't look 5'6". Super I thought he was like 6'1 or 6'2". Yeah, he looks taller. Well, about how I but, don't I mean, it doesn't, want... Like, height, I mean, height does give you an... It gives you an advantage in a fight. But, I mean, height 5'6", five, six, five, six, that's why he got a fat-ass gun. I'm telling you, bro. But, I mean, height don't really matter in a fight. I mean, it gives you a really big advantage. But, I mean... It's not, it, height, height's not really everything, bro, to be honest with you. It's really not. It just, it really all depends on just, like, really how you use your hands. That's all it is, bro. It's really all it is. If Charlie was black, Sneeko would have pulled the N-word, like, bro, what? Um, Ox battle? Yeah, later. Want to fight? Like, I, I'm not afraid to say, like, I don't want to get hit in the head. Right? Like, I'm afraid of <laughs> taking headshots. It's probably a super normal fear to have. So, I'm averse to going into a boxing match, especially one that's just a clout-driven spectacle like this. That'd be completely fucking worthless. And I've been super open about that, which I'm sure you know since you keep saying that you've watched my content. So, you probably know that I was never going to accept a fight in the first place. Especially since you're, like, significantly taller than me. Right? Like, it does, it does, it wouldn't make any sense. 
And even though you would probably beat me in a fight, you're certainly not beating me in like an aesthetic physique competition because goddamn, I blow your ass out of the water. Look at this fucking anime character physique I'm rocking. Meanwhile, you're over here with that Abercrombie and Fitch from 1998. Now, uh, in Sneeko's credit, he did start going to the gym recently. Maybe I inspired him. And you know what? That's great. I'm glad I could have a positive impact on your life like that, Sneeko. Getting into the gym is a fantastic thing and you're going to feel so much better. And I know you'll start seeing results soon as long as you keep at it. And then finally, our last exchange goes very similarly to the others. You're not special from the other 10 soy boys who say the same thing. If you got a problem, stop talking on the internet. Let's solve it. So I said, got your Discord still working on responses? Brother, I have no problem. You started it and I made fun of you in return. You're upset about publicly admitting to cuckoldry and get mad at me for bringing it up. You should be mad at yourself instead. Have some self-reflection. Which it's true. I don't have a problem. You literally started it, Sneeko, and you even asked your audience to let me know everything you said and send me your clips. You actually asked for a response, and then got super upset when my response was a little too mean to your feelings. How is that not the ultimate cuckoldry? Like, even more so than your girl getting clapped by a thousand men. How? <laughs> like, how can you, with a straight face, still call other people soy boys? I'm not kidding, I really didn't want to keep talking about you, but you won't stop talking and crying about me. It's sad. I understand you have a humiliation fetish, so hopefully this whole thing has helped you orgasm one more time from all of it. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's fun dunking on you, Sneeko. I don't. And I'm certainly not canceling you. But you keep doing this. So you forced my hand to make fun of you again. But anyway, that, that's about it. See ya. My thing with Sneeko is like, I only knew him from when he was trying to be the the Andrew Tate type of figure on like YouTube and shit. He was trying to motivate people and talk about different polit uh, political ideals and shit like that. I know he was that type of person and I actually don't know why he got banned from YouTube, but it's like, it's so crazy that like, I don't know, like he's just still trying to claw his way back into some form of limelight. It's just, it's just fucking crazy. But hey, Moist Critical, that was a good ass video. That was a really good ass video. I thought he brought down a lot of good points. I mean, his first video was kind of the same. It's kind of the same replica. He did bring out that big ass gun, you know, saying because Sneeko low-key tried to threaten him but hey Charlie he did the same thing back so hey W moist exactly exactly I was a young nigga sir I did that shit for a purpose